Oak Ridge against Gallatin, a traditional East Tennessee powerhouse. It should be an exciting football game, and the festivities here at homecoming are just beginning as the band is marching from their parade position on to the Blankenship field. They'll be making a circle around, and, of course, the floats and such, the homecoming court will also be introduced, and it should be an exciting evening here at Blankenship Field. This is David Cl Larry Jim Vines, John Hope on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7. We'd like to thank you for this exciting football game, Oak Ridge against Gallatin. The captains are out on the field now. Chris Groff for Oak Ridge. And Gallatin also has their captains, and we're about to get things set here on Cablevision Channel 7. David Cleary, Jim Vines back here at Blankenship Field. We're about a minute away from the start of this exciting football game between the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats and the Gallatin Green Wave. The captains for both teams are out on the field as the Gallatin team just now comes. Nice crowd across the way here from Gallatin. A lot of Oak Ridge fans here. We've had good crowds all during the four games that Oak Ridge has played here at home. David, we're expecting a fantastic contest tonight. Both teams coming off losses last week, so you know the practices have been very spirited during the week, Coach Young has fired up about, as I have seen him in quite some time. Practices have been very mixed. They were going to talk with the coaches just before kickoff. They said they really just don't know what to expect. Tonight could make or break the Oak Ridge Wildcats this year. Gallatin will be receiving the football from Oak Ridge, and we're about to get things set. The fourth and final home game here from Blankenship Field, the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats and the Gallatin Green Wave. And, of course, during the ball game, we're going to be keeping track of that very important Hall Central game. Of course, the outcome of that ball game will determine whether Oak Ridge will be able to make the TSSAA playoffs this season. Of course, Oak Ridge fans pulling 
for the Central Bobcats to beat the Halls Red Devils. The game is at Halls, a very important contest over there in Halls, Tennessee. Oh, a very important ball game. Of course, we've reiterated uh, throughout the week, David, if Central wins, Oak Ridge controls their own destiny by winning the rest of their district ball games. If Halls was to win, this game tonight paramount for the Oak Ridge Wildcats if they were to make the playoffs here in 1987. And Sam Sampson will be kicking off for Oak Ridge back to receive the kick for the Gallatin Green Wave. We'll go number five, Bubba Dunn. And of course, this Gallatin team we've talked about him has some very fine, talented athletes on the team, including a preseason All-American quarterback and we're going to get a good look at him here in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, Oak Ridge will definitely be uh, looking at him. And, David, he's big. He's uh, 6'2", 190 pounds. He's the second year as a starter, and we're underway. Sampson kicks off. It's going to be going out of bounds, and it'll be a penalty against Oak Ridge. So Sampson kicks off out of bounds. One thing you said earlier, I believe one of the games last couple of weeks or so, that when Sampson kicks off well at first, he does a good game. Let's hope that's not going to be the case tonight. Well, yeah, let's see how he does on his second kickoff, David. If he gets a good one off here, he gets a chance to get his nerves back. Very tough season for Sampson this year. He's missed a couple of uh, opportunities to put Oak Ridge on the scoreboard, and I know that he wants to do well tonight. His best game of the season was against Halls when he put a couple of balls in the end zone. Let's see if he can rise to the occasion tonight. He'll get a second chance. He's backed up five yards. Let's see what he does. It could be a break for the green wave. And once again, Sam Sampson about to kick off to the Green Wave from Gallatin, Tennessee. Like we said, a nice crowd on hand here from Gallatin, including their band. They're going to be perform performing at halftime as Sampson tees it up, done back to receive the kick for the Green Wave. We're about to get underway here from Blankenship Field. Here's the kick once again by Sam Sampson. High kick straight down the field is going to be fielded at the 15-yard line by back on the right side, up to the 25, up to the 30, and down to the 30-yard line he'll go. Carrying the football on the return was Greg Knight. And let's see, it'll be Gallatin taking over. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball at their own 30-yard line. And up the line of scrimmage will come the Gallatin Green Wave. 11.52 to go first quarter of play. No score, Oak Ridge against Gallatin. Up the line of scrimmage will come the Green Wave. They've got yellow pants and white jerseys. They come up from the I formation. Corey Lewis at quarterback. First down, 10. Handoff goes first man through up the middle for two or three yards, battling his way up to about the 34-yard line before he's tackled by, among other people, Michael Laurendine and number 73 for the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats, Derek Golden. It'll be second down, seven yards to go for Gallatin. Right away, David, you see nothing fancy about this Gallatin ball club. One of the biggest offensive lines I've seen come play at Blank and Chip Field. They're very big in first play. They come right at the Wildcats. Second down, six yards to go. Pitch out right side. Goes to number 28. Tries to turn the corner. That's Tally. He's got first down yardage. He's blasted as he goes across the 40-yard line up to about the 42. But I believe enough for a first down. to be first and 10 Gallatin. Line of scrimmage will be the Gallatin 41-yard line. Good job that time, David, by the Wildcats of stringing the play out. They just were not able to close, and this kid's pretty quick. He's 5'8", about 165 pounds, and he gets to the outside very, very quick, and he's going to be a problem for the Wildcats throughout the ball game. First and 10, Gallatin from the 41. Once again, they come up from the eye, and a slot on the left side will go Mitchell, Tally, and Adams, the backfield for Gallatin. Handoff goes second man through, gets to the 40, tries to cut up field, gets the ball to the 45-yard line. Carrying the football this time was Tally. He picks up about three on the play. It'll be second down and about seven yards to go for the Gallatin Green Wave. 10.51 to go first quarter. We're just underway. Homecoming night here from Blankenship Field, the fourth and final home game of the Oak Ridge High School football season. Both teams come into the game with a record of five and two. Oak Ridge coming off a loss, and so is Gallatin. Second down, seven yards to go. Reverse. On the right side, the quarterback will try to turn it upfield. He gets the ball up to about the 48-yard line. It'll be third down, about four yards to go for Gallatin. Big play in the ball game for the Oak Ridge Wildcat defense. David, already you can see Gallatin really trying to come off the ball and beat Oak Ridge at the point of attack. If Gallatin can control the inner line of scrimmage, they should be able to run straight ahead all night long. They've got third down and three. Let's see how much confidence they have in their straight ahead running game. From the 48-yard line, Tally, handoff goes right side. He gets close to first down. Yardage on second effort. Nice play there time by the running back. It'll be very, very close. I believe it'll indeed be a first down for Gallatin. Oh, I think so, David. He got it on second effort as he exploded into the defensive player. And indeed, it is a first down for the Gallatin Green Wave. A very good contingent. Uh, I talked to Jim Hilton earlier tonight. 
not quite as many people as they anticipated showing up tonight. Uh, they expected to bring 3,000 people, way short of that, but a good crowd nonetheless from Gallatin. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball is now inside Oak Ridge territory at the 49-yard line. Lewis brings him up. First man through, gets the ball to the 45-yard line, inside to about the 44. Once again, I believe that was Tally carrying the football, and maybe Henry Adams, Lauren Dean on the tackle, pick up of the mouth board. Second down, six for Gallatin. Very good surge by the offensive line of the Gallatin Green Wave as they're just simply moving Oak Ridge off the ball, David. They have picked up three or four yards of carry just about every time they've touched the ball. Basically, it's been straight ahead football. Second down, six for Gallatin right at the 44-yard line of Oak Ridge. Hand off, excuse me, now the quarterback wants to turn it upfield. It is a little arm tackle by one of the Wildcat players. He gets the ball to about the 43-yard line. I believe that was Brad Du possibly on the tackle for Oak Ridge. Good penetration that time by the Oak Ridge Wildcats, David, as they got in to the backfield a little bit and forced the quarterback to make a decision a little bit early. Of course, the quarterback, Corey, always wants to string out before the pitch. That time, the defensive end, McCaskill, came up and made him pitch or made him keep early. Third down, five yards to go, up to the line of scrimmage. Will come the Greenway pass across the way, incomplete. I don't know what the problem was. Some extracurricular activity at the end of the play, but it'll be fourth down, five yards to go for Gallatin. And onto the field will come the punting unit. Very interesting that Gallatin chooses to punt here, David. The most they can gain on the exchange, barring a kick inside the 10, is about uh, 25, 30 yards or so. Very interesting that they decide to punt. We'll see if the field goal kick or the punter We'll try to angle it out out of bounds as Oak Ridge drops two men deep. Jamie Redman and Quayu Graham back to receive the punt. The Gallatin punter will be punting from about his own 45-yard line. Fourth down five, has the snap, very little problem. High kick, not very long. It's going to take a bounce and take a good Gallatin bounce down to about the 15-yard line, and that's where Oak Ridge will take over. First and 10 from the 15, and we'll be back from Blankenship Field after this 30-second timeout. T.J. Parrish on the first play from scrimmage for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Quick pitch to Jamie Redman. Redman around the outside, cuts back up, fights for yardage, gains about four, David Cleary. Good individual effort by Jamie Redman as he is brought down after a pickup of about four. Call it maybe four and a half. Second down, five and a half for Oak Ridge. Good first play by the Wildcats. They got the ball to Redman early. Line of scrimmage is the 20-yard line, 7.41 to go first quarter. Oak Ridge comes up from the eye formation, two men wide to the left side. Quarterback T.J. Parrish pitches it out to Redmond, turns the corner of the 21-yard line, maybe a yard at most on the plate. Gang tackling by the Gallatin Green Wave. It'll be third down, about five to go for Oak Ridge. Misdirection seems to be the key for the Oak Ridge offense, David. It seems to me that they are going to have to make these big linemen and these big linebackers take one false step and then counter with the quickness of the running backs to go the opposite direction. The quick pitch, unless Redmond can get outside, I don't think will be able to work unless he can get outside early. Misdirection could work for Oak Ridge throughout the ball game. Quayu Graham, wide to the right side, along with John Elim, I formation Oak Ridge. Third down, six yards to go. TJ will pass, looks down the field, the pass is there, complete to Quayu Graham for first down yardage at the 34-yard line. The last two or three ball games, Quayu Graham has really come of his own. Well, David, he really established himself last week in the central ball game as Oak Ridge tried to come from behind. Quayu, what he does, David, he goes after the ball. Once it's in the air, Quayu assumes it's his, and he goes after it as he did on that play. Very good execution. Again, T.J. Parrish playing within himself. 15, 20-yard passes right on the money. First down, Oak Ridge. From the 34-yard line, 6.37 to go first quarter. Once again, Oak Ridge from the eye. Pitch out left side goes to Redmond. Chuck looks to the corner, turns the ball to the 35-yard line. It's going to be brought down to the 37, and it's a pickup of about four on the play. It'll be second down, six yards to go for Oak Ridge. David, as you can see, the Green Wave defense paying a lot of attention to Jamie Redmond. Look back at the central ball game when Oak Ridge went for two. If they continue to pursue Redmond as they are now, coming up quick from the defensive back and linebacker positions, look for the halfback pass sometime during this ball game. It's kind of interesting that Oak Ridge has not come up from the wishbone yet on this opening drive. Second down, about seven to go for a first as the quick handoff goes up the middle to the, about the 40-yard line. Carrying the football was John Spratlin, the fullback, substituting for Stan Cooper. It'll be third down and about three yards to go for a first for Oak Ridge. 
couple of people hurt. Randy Sexton, Derek Golden, Johnny Williams, and Stan Cooper, all people that Coach Young has counted on throughout the season. Derek Golden is playing. Sexton is playing. They will be on a play-by-play -play basis, both of them having nagging injuries. And, David, here's the wishbone. Third down, three yards to go. Quayu Graham wide to the right side. Handoff goes Redmond, will not get the first down. He scoots up, he's about a yard short at the 43-yard line. And it'll be fourth down, one to go as they're unpacking the pile. Let's see, it'll be the punting unit coming onto the field for Oak Ridge. Tough break for the Wildcats that time, David. A straight handoff into the line to Redmond. Interesting call on third down as they're trying to establish the fact that Redmond is gonna be the one to carry the ball quite a bit during the ball game tonight. And so, Sampson will be punting for the Wildcats back at his own 27-yard line. Two men back to receive the punt for Gallatin, including Chris Lee and, let's see, Dunn once again. Fourth down, about two. Low snap, here comes the pressure, but the punt is away. High kick, not very long. It's going to be fielded at the 30-yard line. The man is going to be blasted, I believe, at the 30-yard line. Now it's pushed out of bounds. And maybe a late call, some problems on the sidelines. Joe White having a, a word or two so with Corey Lewis. And it'll be Gallatin taking over. First down, 10 yards to go at their own 31. David, both teams just trying to fill each other out. Gallatin so far winning the field position war as they take over on the 31. Oak Ridge unable to pick up a first down in their first possession. Neither did Gallatin. This is the second possession for Gallatin. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Only two possessions so far in the ball game. First and 10, Gallatin. Pitch out right side. Goes to 28. Cuts the corner to the 45. Still on his feet to the 46-yard line. And it'll be a first and 10 for the Gallatin Green Wave. Well, David, this kid's a runner. He really explodes. That time he ran over his own man and to pick up some yardage. Oak Ridge will not be able to let him get to the outside. If he does that, He's going to go for some yardage. I don't think he's as fast as Redmond, but he really looks like he's running the ball extremely hard, and he knows where to go and how to follow his blocking. Bubba Dunn, wide to the right side, eye formation, a man in the slot on the right side. Handoff goes to him, and he goes right into the middle of the pile. And let's see, might have been a fumble on the play, the way the Oak Ridge team reacted, but I don't believe so. It'll be a gain of about a yard on the play. Second down, nine yards to go for the Gallatin team from the Green Wave, actually. Don Evans into the ball game for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Going out for the Cats, number 58, Joe Morgan. David Oak Ridge in the familiar 50 defense with Chris Groff, the senior, calling the signals. The defensive backs, Caldwell, Spratlin, Redmond, uh, McCaskill, one of the outside linebackers, along with Joe White. Second down, nine yards to go. Gallatin from about the 47 will pass. Man across the way, incomplete. The receiver was belted at the 40-yard line by Jamie Redmond. Third down, nine yards to go for Gallatin. Nice offensive set that time by Gallatin, David, showing that they can throw the ball. And you've got to be uh, envious of them having a quarterback six foot two, 190 pounds of preseason All-State in the Oak Ridgers column as well as throughout the state, one of the best quarterbacks considered in the Southeast. Three minutes, 37 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. I formation, third down, nine to go for the Gallatin Green Wave. Once again, Lewis will pass, looks down the way. The man is there, intercepted by Oak Ridge to the 50, to the 45, to the 40. Still on his feet to about the 35-yard line. Intercepting the pass for Oak Ridge was Chris Croft, the All-State linebacker for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Well, David, what he did, he took a very deep drop. He got back early, made a good hook zone drop, and he was there for the pass. It looked like it was a little bit underthrown. Very good job of scouting by the Oak Ridge defense. Let's see if Oak Ridge tries to get something on the board immediately after this play. Biggest play of the ball game early. Quayu Graham on single coverage split out wide to the wide side or visitor side of the field. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. Up to the line will come Oak Ridge. Full wishbone this time. T.J. Parrish at quarterback. T.J. rolls to the right. Pitches it out to Ribbon. He's got the ball to the 40, 35, to the 30. Wakes it up into the 23-yard line. First and 10, Oak Ridge. Big play by T.J. Parrish, David. He really strung out the defense very well. He could have hurried to the outside, but he took his time and waited until the last minute. A good pitch to Redmond. Redmond did the wise thing by turning it up early. Big move that time by Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge now wide side of the field, the home side. Let's see if they come with a quick pitch back to the wide side of the field. Line of scrimmage is the 23-yard line. First and 10 for Oak Ridge that, at that point. Bernard Douglas wide to the left side has an equipment problem for Oak Ridge being official timeout on the play and back to the line of scrimmage will come Oak Ridge. First down 10, 2 minutes 50 seconds to go first quarter of play from the wishbone, Douglas wide to the left side. 
TJ. Hands it off once again to Redmond. He gets the ball to the 20 yard line. Might it be a yard past that to the 19. Pick up of about three, so it'll be second down seven for Oak Ridge. Interesting that time, David. Redmond lined up in the left halfback position, ran to the weak side of the field. Who it frees up is John Elam. Let's see if they fake to Redmond and try to get Elam out wide. The key, obviously, the green wave are all over Redmond every time he touches the ball. Mike Caldwell into the ball game now for Oak Ridge. Bernard Douglas checks out. Quayu Graham drifts off wide to the left side along with John Elam. They come up from the ice. Second down, seven yards to go. Pitch out, left side goes to Redmond. Tries to turn the corner, will not get uh, any yards at all. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Might have even lost a yard. It'll be third down and about eight yards to go for Oak Ridge. The Wildcats last week had trouble once they got inside the 20-yard line of Central and were not able to put the ball in the end zone. Let's see what Oak Ridge can come up with this week. As this is David Cleary, Jim Vines, Peter Simons, Brian Story, and John Hope on Tennessee Cable Vision Channel 7. We're glad you've tuned in. Third down, eight yards to go. Oak, the line of scrimmage will come Oak Ridge. Elam and Graham wide to the right side. Oak Ridge from the eye formation from the 23 pitch. There's the halfback pass. He wants to pass. He's Elam down the way. The pass goes to Quayu incomplete at the five yard line. So it'll be fourth down and eight yards to go for Oak Ridge. And Oak Ridge probably will be going for another play. Oh yeah, David, they're in four down territory here. They have nothing to gain by going for a field goal. If they don't get a play in right away, look for them to try to take a timeout. But instead Caldwell hustling in to give the play to T.J. Parrish. And this is the play of the game so far. As now McCaskill goes back into the ball game. David, do they have too many people? McCaskill doesn't really, is not sure of the play. And so Oak Ridge up the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, eight yards. Caldwell now comes out. Wishbone for Oak Ridge. McCaskill wide to the left. Graham wide to the right. Long count for Oak Ridge. Quick handoff goes on the reverse to McCaskill. He looks like he wants to turn the floor. Now we'll throw it into the end zone. Touchdown, Oak Ridge. Beautiful pass by Stanton McCaskill at the back side of the end zone to Quayu Graham. And Oak Ridge takes a six to nothing lead. Very interesting how Caldwell was into the ball game. Then McCaskill comes in. All you know Caldwell told him was you're gonna throw it. Very good job by Quayu Graham. What was important, David, he did not give up on the arm of Stanton McCaskill. Had he not continued with the pattern, that ball's overthrown. Credit both men on that play. Thad Ulrich in to attempt the point after Clifford Guthrie will be holding. The ball is down, the kick is up, the kick is good. So it's time to build our score. One minute, 27 seconds to go, first quarter. The Oak Ridge High School Wildcats seven, and the Gallatin Green wave nothing. And we'll be back after this 30 second timeout. A bit of trickery, but they've shown that they can make it work. I think what helped them was the halfback pass on third down. I don't think the green wave anticipated Oak Ridge coming up with another option pass like they did. Credit Quayu and Stanton. Very good timing on their part. Sam Sampson to kick off for Oak Ridge. 127 to go first quarter. Here's a kick. Line drive kick. It's going to be fielded at the 15. Comes off to left side. Returnable to the 20. To the 25. Trips down at about the 25 yard line. Making the stop for Oak Ridge with Stefan Scapatisi. Well, and he did a good job, David. Now it becomes very important for the Oak Ridge defense. Gallatin has shown an ability to move the ball on Oak Ridge right up the middle. They've come out throwing when it's been third and long or second and long, but they are going to continue to try to establish the straight ahead game, running behind that big 230 pound fullback and the line that averages 220 pounds. First down, 10 yards to go for Gallatin at the 25. Pitch out right side, goes around the corner for good yardage up to about the 31. Good second effort once again by Joe Talley. Well, David, you're going to see it all night long as we want to remind everyone listening on WATO that Gallatin does not have one player that plays offense and defense. They start 11 different players offensively and defensively, much like the Baylor teams in the late 70s did. Nine players going both ways for Oak Ridge tonight as it'll be Gallatin second down, three yards to go, 30 seconds to go first quarter. Handoff goes up the middle, looks to the right, comes back to the 40-yard line, still on his feet to the 43. Finally brought down at the 44-yard line by Oak Ridge's Jamie Redmond. Well, David, this tally is some kind of impressive running back. Once he anticipates a hit, he slides off the hit, never does take a full stick. That time Mike Caldwell had a chance to get him, but he went ahead for about five extra yards. If he continues to get outside, eventually he's going to break one. 20 seconds to go, first quarter, 7-0 Oak Ridge on top. I formation will come 
the Gallatin Greenway from the 44-yard line. Lewis hands it off, first man through, battling away will come Rodney Mitchell. He's a big back, gets the ball across the 45 as the first quarter comes to a close. So our score here from Blankenship Field, Oak Ridge 7 and the Gallatin Greenway nothing as we're now at the end of the first quarter. Why don't we send it back to the station for this third second down and about seven yards to go up to line of scrimmage will come the green wave. Line to the left side will go Bubba Dunn. They've got a man in the squad on the left side. Eye formation for them. Second down, seven. Lewis, pitch out right side, goes to Tally, tries to turn the corner and does to the 50. Inside Oak Ridge territory, down to the 45-yard line. Another Gallatin first down. Well, David, Tally has got the speed to get outside, and what Gallatin is able to do, and Coach Young talked about it in the pregame show, they isolate on, they use the fullback to make an isolation block on the outside tackle or the outside defensive end, and they knock him back inside, and that allows Tally to get out and work out one-on-one, -on -one, and we've already seen he's able to pick up four and five yards extra when he works one-on-one. -on -one. Bubba Dunn, wide to the right side, Oak Ridge. On defense, first down, 10 yards to go. Flags are down on the play. Might be an encroachment call against Oak Ridge. We it, just have to see. It looked like that Oak Ridge lined up in the neutral zone to begin with, and that's an automatic penalty, as indeed that is the case. I want to say Randy Sexton or Joe Morgan, one of the two, lined up right on the line, and that's where the ball was, so it was an automatic call. Tough break for Oak Ridge. Let's see if Gallatin goes to the air here, David. Having first down and five yards to go, they may try to do something to try to loosen up the Oak Ridge offense. First down, five yards to go at the 40-yard line. 11.30 to go first half, 7-0 Oak Ridge on top. Gallatin comes up from the eye. Handoff goes up the middle. Great running room for Mitchell. He turns the ball inside the 30 down to about the 26-yard line. First and 10 for the Gallatin Green Wave. Oak Ridge was anticipating a sweep of some sort, and they busted right through the middle with that big 230-pound fullback of theirs, David Rodney Mitchell. He's a senior, 5'10", definitely a major college prospect. They say he's used primarily as a blocker. 41 carries coming into the season, 221 yards. Bubba Dunn wide to the left side. Once again, they come up from the eye. First down, 10 from the 23. Handoff goes to Tally, tries to turn the corner nowhere, but now gets away from one man and is going to have to be gang tackled backwards. The ball was stripped out of his hands by Stan McCaskill, but it'll be Gallatin retaining possession, and they'll have it second down, nine yards to go at the, let's see, the Oak Ridge 26-yard line. David, this kid's only a junior, and he only goes 175 pounds. That time it took three Oak Ridge players to stop his forward momentum. A very good body lean once he gets lined up north and south. Very tough to bring down. Second down, nine. Gallatin from about the 25-yard line. Pitch out goes to Tally, who runs right into number 34 for the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats, Edward Dunbar. And he might have gotten a yard, but that's about it. Third down, call it eight yards to go for Gallatin. Once again, David, just like Oak Ridge was in four-down territory, Gallatin definitely in four-down territory here. I don't think they may try to go for a pass here, trying to get it all back at once. They realize they have two plays to try to pick up a, what looks like to be about six and a half yards. 10.05 to go, first half of play, seven nothing, Oak Ridge on top of Gallatin. I formation, will come the green way. Reverse. And it goes on the left side. He's got plenty of running room to the 20 yard line. Still on his feet inside to the 15, brought down finally at the 10 yard line by Jamie Redman. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go for Gallatin at the 11. The outside containment on the strong side got sucked in that time, David, as Gallatin giving Oak Ridge a dose of their own medicine. To Oak Ridge's credit, Redmond did stop him on about the 11. Gallatin will have to get almost inside the one to pick up a first down. 9.45 to go. Gallatin brings it up once again. This time the line of scrimmage, the 11 yard line. They come up from the eye. Mitchell and Tally in the backfield for Gallatin. Handoff goes Mitchell. He gets the ball inside the 10 up to about the seven yard line. Had a good hole, tripped up at the last moment. Chris Groff, 76 on the stop for the Wildcats. David, big gaping holes opened up by this green wave offensive line. They're so big, David. They match up so well. And you expect the fullback to be blocking so much of the time when he does get the ball. He's just so tough to bring down. He's 230 pounds. Second down, seven yards to go. The ball at the eight-yard line. Gallatin, handoff goes Mitchell this time. Will not go but a yard or so as he runs into the basically the front side of the Oak Ridge line. Randy Sexton along with, let's see, who gets up a little bit slow. Groff once again, maybe do. It'll be third down, six yards to go for Gallatin. Gallatin really looked out of sync on that offensive series. It almost looked like someone jumped off sides as the Oak Ridge players are uh, waving to the sidelines, and that's the only thing that gets this crowd up in the air is 
Uh, once again, the Oak Ridge home crowd really not supporting the defense. Big play by the Wildcats right here. Third down six. Lewis will pass. Looks down the way in trouble. It rolls to the right side. Here comes the Oak Ridge man, but the man is there completed the one yard line. It should be at a first down. Had plenty of time that time. Michael Laurendine was trailing Corey Lewis, but I believe it'll be first and goal from the one for the Gallatin Green Wave. Very good poise by the quarterback for the Gallatin Green Wave, David. Corey really took his time. He took a little pump fake. I think he thought he had a man open, but all of a sudden he decided to wait as it looked like the tight end broke off his pattern and made an excellent catch as indeed it is first down and goal. Gallatin will have four plays from the one yard line. Up to the line will come Corey Lewis. They'll come up from the eye. I guess you can probably guess that Mitchell is gonna carry the ball in this one. First and goal, handoff goes to another man. Tally hit at the goal line and pushed back. He'll not get into the end zone. I don't believe any signal has been made but uh, Gallatin thinks they've scored, but I don't see any kind of indication from the referees that that is the case. They're talking things over, and let's see. Is it a touchdown? I guess, I guess it, it is a touchdown, but I never saw anybody signal it. It looked like one guy signaled it early, and then uh, everybody was rushing to find out whether or not it was. At any rate, interesting Gallatin, of course, going for the extra point here instead of going for two this early in the ball game. In the attempt the point will come number 33 for the Green Wave, Hurtby, and the ball is down, snap is high, the kick is up, the kick is good. So at the time of the field, our score, eight minutes to go in the first half, Oak Ridge and Gallatin tied at seven. And we'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Driving kick will take Quayu Graham into the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback. And that was one of the highest kicks I've ever seen in high school football. Well, it looked like, David, that play was almost stopped before the kick as the green wave may have been guilty of being offsides because the referees blew the, the whistle and now you see the green wave trotting back as indeed I believe they will be penalized for getting off just a little bit early. You would think with a kicker with that kind of leg, they would not be in as big a hurry to get down the field. But at any rate, a good break for the Oak Ridge Wildcats as they should be able to get the ball and have some sort of run back barring a kick uh, from the 35 yard line into the end zone which would be a uh, 65 yard kickoff. And once again they will move the ball to the 35 yard line and Quayu Graham and Bernard Douglas back to receive the kick from the Gallatin Green Wave. Oak Ridge and Gallatin tied to seven here from Blankenship Field. You can watch the replay of this game on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7 at 12 o'clock on Saturday. And let's see. Once again, Gallatin to kick off. Quayu Graham standing back at about his own 10-yard line. And here's the kick once again by Gallatin. High kick, very short this time. It's going to be fielded by Dunbar at the 20-yard line. Comes down the sideline to the 25. Still on his feet to the 30. Down the 35 to the 40. And now pushed out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Good field position as Oak Ridge takes over. Well, and a good decision by Dunbar, number 34, for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. He went straight ahead for about five yards, immediately cut it outside. Didn't really try to do anything fancy. Picked up about 15, 20 yards uh, more than they would have gotten had the ball been in the end zone on the first kick. They take over an excellent field position. The best start on a first play from scrimmage by either team so far in the ball game. Y.U. Graham wide to the left side. Oak Ridge comes up. Wishbone first down 10 from about the 40-yard line of the Wildcats. T.J. rolls to the right, pitches it out to Elam. He fumbles the football. It's going to be recovered by Gallatin at the 45-yard line. That pitch... Might not have should have been made by TJ as Elam had it fumble off his leg and Gallatin takes over first and 10. Well, he forced it a little bit, David. It looked like he got the pitch behind him a little bit also. That time, uh, TJ trying to make a big play. You kind of get the feeling that uh, Oak Ridge is trying to bust something because of the fact that Gallatin stunts their defenses so often. If you can catch them in a bad stunt and get the ball to the outside, it works. That time, TJ forced it a little bit and a big play for Gallatin. Corey Lewis brings him up, first down, 10 yards to go from the 44-yard line. Handoff goes for about four or five yards to about the 41-yard line. Once again, on a second effort by Tally, it'll be second down and about six yards to go for Gallatin. Well, oh, David, he's only a junior. That time again, hit back behind the line of scrimmage and just shed the tackler. He just, uh, the first guy has never gotten him yet so far tonight. Bubba Dunn, wide to the right side. Once again, Gallatin comes up. From the eye, a man in the slot on the right side. Second down, we'll call it seven yards to go. Handoff goes to Tally, gets the ball to the 35-yard line, still on his feet, to the 30. Turns the He's ball gone. to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Five, touchdown, Gallatin. What a burst of speed by Joe Tally, and Gallatin leads by a score of 13 to 7. Well, David, he got outside, and Redmond 
got clipped by his own player, it looked like, as Redmond tried to kick it in the afterburners to get out after him, but Talley just exploded. David, he's awfully quick. He runs, he's like a big John Spratlin. He just really gets outside, and he's got the bounce move to the outside. Coach Young said in the pregame show that he's big, a little bit bigger than Spratlin, a little bit quicker, and he's done it so far tonight for Gallatin. Point after attempt about to be made by the Gallatin Greenway. The ball is down, the kick is up, the kick is good. So it's time of the field, our score, 6.57 to go. Gallatin 14, Oak Ridge 7, and we'll be back after the 60-second timeout. here at Blankenship Field. Gallatin about to kick off to Oak Ridge. Graham back at his own five-yard line. 14-7, Gallatin on top. High line drive kick. Takes a knuckleball bounce at the five and will be picked up by Graham there. Gets the ball to 10. Here comes one. They breaks it down the right side to the 15, to the 20. 25 to the 30. Breaks it down the field to the 45, to the 40. To the 45, to the 50. To the 45, to the 40. To the 35, to the 30. To the 25, to the 20. To the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Oak Ridge. A 95-yard touchdown return by Kwayu Graham. Well, it was the return by Kwayu Graham, David, but I tell you, there were three blockers that almost literally locked arms for the Oak Ridge Wildcats who Kwayu Graham first to the home side of the field, and Kwayu showed tremendous judgment cutting it back up the middle as you see a stunned Gallatin team on the sidelines as Oak Ridge is right back in this ball game. Just like Kwayu Grimm, an 85-yard punt return against Jefferson County last year, a 97-yard return this time against Gallatin. And into the game for Oak Ridge will come Thad Ulrich to attempt the point after. 14-13, Gallatin on top. Boy, David, that's going to look so tremendous on the films. I think, if anything, Gallatin overran the kick since Kwayu let it take a couple bounces the players got out of their lanes a little bit and almost over-pursued. And Kwayu definitely knew how to take advantage of an excellent cut. And Guthrie will be holding. Ulrich will be attempting the point after. Kind of interesting that Sam Sampson not doing the kicking tonight as Ulrich will attempt his second point after. The ball is down. The kick is up. The kick is good. So at time of our score, 6.30 to go in the first half of play. We're all tied up at 14. And we'll be back after this 30 seconds as Oak Ridge will be kicking off to Gallatin. And with 6.30 to go, we're all tied up at 14, just like that. The Oak Ridge offense did not have to come onto the field. A 97-yard return by, and that's not the longest. Dave Griffith had a 100-yard return against Chattanooga Notre Dame in 1951, but it's number two as he surpasses Craig Freeman, who had an 894-yard one against McMinn County. And here's the kickoff by Sampson. It's going to be fielded at the 10-yard line. Comes off to the right side, up to the 15. Still on his way to the 20. The 25 blasted down by Sam Sampson at the 24-yard line. Gallatin first down, 10 yards to go from that point. Very important defensive series right here for the Oak Ridge Wildcat defense, David, as they saw the green wave take it down on the fumble recovery and put it into the end zone. Oak Ridge has to establish the fact that they can stop Gallatin. They have not done it so far in the ball game. 6.20 to go. If Gallatin was to put together a time-consuming drive, Oak Ridge will not have time left on the scoreboard to even things up. 6.10 to go. Corey Lewis hands it off to Tally, breaks it open to the 25-yard line. Only a yard gained on the play. Chris Groff that time along with John Spratlin, but Groff the first man there. I believe that is the first time during the ball game Tally has gone down on the initial hit. Second down, about nine, maybe eight yards to go as McCaskill comes out of the contest. 5.50 to go in the first half. 14-14 our score. I formation for the Green Wave as Corey Lewis brings him up. Tally and Mitchell in the backfield. And off goes second man through Tally, this time right into the middle of the pack and pushed back, baby. He'll only get a yard on the play. Third down, about eight yards to go. What Oak Ridge has to be careful of, David, is the explosiveness of this team to the outside. This time, the wide side of the field is the home side, and Tally has already shown that once he gets to the outside, he has some speed. I think Jamie Redman may be the only player out there on the Oak Ridge defense that will be able to cause some problems or be able to catch Tally in the open field. David, we've got an equipment timeout, and Green Wave, Gallatin is going to take a timeout. Let's take a 30-second timeout as we tell you that Central 
has got on the scoreboard first against Halls. They lead six to nothing. The extra point was blocked. Central ahead of Halls, six to nothing. We'll be back here at Oak Ridge after this 32nd time. Line of scrimmage is the 26 yard line. Corey Lewis brings it up. 14 14 our score, Oak Ridge against Gallatin. From the I formation, Lewis will hand it off up the middle to the 30 yard line, and that's as far as he'll go. Maybe to the 31, that'll be short of first down yardage, and Gallatin will have to punt. Best defensive series by the Oak Ridge Wildcats, David. I don't know that I would trust Gallatin to even punt here. They realize that the momentum is shifted in Oak Ridge's favor, even though the score is tied. Jamie Redman, I believe, dropping back along with Bernard Douglas for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. And Oak Ridge should get the ball around midfield, close to midfield on the exchange. And Gallatin will be punting from about their own 20-yard line. The snap is good. The punt is away. High, terrible, short kick. Going to be fielded by Redman at the 40. Up to the 45. Breaks it up into the 50. Cuts it back down the left side to the 45-yard line. Great field position for Oak Ridge. Well, David, Oak Ridge is fired up, and I believe that they sense that they have gained momentum. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Very important for the Wildcats to get something on the board. Oak Ridge has all of their timeouts remaining, I do believe. And T.J. Parrish is the quarterback. Groff in there running in to bring the play in. Don Evans, one of the one of the linemen. Reggie Mormon, the center for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. As Oak Ridge comes up, David, they will not be in the full house backfield. They will be in the eye. Spratlin and Redman, the tailbacks. Elam and Dunmer, excuse me, Douglas wide to the right side as Redman turns the ball up the field to the 45. Breaks it down the left side to the 40. Inside to the 35-yard line. Close to another Oak Ridge first down. And I'll tell you what, Jamie Redmond got stuck that time, David. I'm not so sure that Redmond ever intended to throw the ball that time. It looked like that he was using the, the threat of throwing only as a decoy because he tucked it down fairly early and took off with the ball. At any rate, a great decision by him as the clock continues to tick down. We're under four minutes to go. Oak Ridge and Gallatin tied 14-14 Oak Ridge driving. Second down, we'll call it an inch to go for a first for Oak Ridge at the 35-yard line of Gallatin. I formation, two men wide to the right. Handoff goes for first down yardage and about three more to, I believe, let's see, John Sprantlin. He gets the ball to about the 32, three minutes, 32 seconds to go first half. David Oak Ridge trying to hustle back and get into the huddle as the play already coming into the Wildcats. The clock is stopped as the yard markers are being moved and Oak Ridge doing a good job getting the play into the quarterback as Bernard Douglas goes out. Kwai U. Graham will be one of the wideouts for the Wildcats along with Stanton McCaskill. First down, 10 from the 33. Wide to the right side, one man, Oak Ridge. Wishbone, 317 to go first half. 14-14, our score handoff goes left side. I guess is P.T. Chay running the ball up to the 30. I thought Elam had the ball. He gets inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Got to start thinking about some timeouts here, David. We're now under, or when this next play gets off, we'll be about two minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the first half. Oak Ridge inside the Green Wave 30-yard line. Second down, eight yards to go for Oak Ridge. Wide to the right side, Kwai U. Graham. Oak Ridge, once again, from the wishbone, Redman, Elam, and Spretlin. T.J. rolls to the right. Will now pitch their ball off to the Elam and gets the ball to the 25, to the 20. Inside, that's Redmond carrying the ball inside the 15, down to the 14, first and 10, Oak Ridge. And the clock stops, David. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. The Wildcats pick up another first down inside the 15-yard line. Oak Ridge will have to get inside the four as the clock continues to run. Oak Ridge inside the four before they will pick up another first down. Stanton McCaskill brings the play in to the senior quarterback, T.J. Parrish. From the 14-yard line, first and 10 Oak Ridge, 2.20 to go in the first half. 14-14 our score. Graham wide to the left side. Elam also out there with him. I formation Oak Ridge, Brentland and Redmond. T.J. hands it off to Sprelling to the 10, inside to the 8-yard line, pickup of about 5 in the play, second down, 5 yards to go. And so, with 2 minutes to go in the first half of play, Oak Ridge has the ball at the 8-yard line, second down, 5 yards to go. Once again, a reminder, Central on top of Halls, over at Halls, by a score of 6 to nothing. Halls has the ball at the Central 37-yard line, and let's see, Oak Ridge will come up to the line of scrimmage. Mike Caldwell into the ball game wide to the left side. Oak Ridge is going to have to hurry, David, to get this play off. Wishbone for Oak Ridge. TJ from the eight. Once again, we'll roll to the right, turn it upfield to the five. Inside he goes to about the four-yard line. 
and a pickup of about four on the play. It's going to be about a yard short of a first. I believe it'll be third down and about a yard to go for Oak Ridge, right at the 10-yard line. Interesting that the Wildcats don't take a time out here, David, to try to conserve as much time on the clock, but I guess they feel like they need to get the first down. If they don't get it on third down here, look for them to take a timeout. Uh, maybe look for TJ to just try to run a quarterback sneak. Uh, on this play as we're now down to less than a minute to go and the crowd has finally woken up here at Blankenship. Third down a yard to go, TJ hands it off and I believe he's got first down yardage and we'll have to see. It's inside the five at about the three yard line. We'll just have to see what they're gonna do. I believe timeout is gonna be asked for. Why don't we send it back to the station for the 60 second timeout. Line 50 seconds to go, first half, 14-14 our score. Oak Ridge up from the wishbone, TJ Parrish at quarterback. Handoff, he'll roll to the right, looks to the end zone, touchdown, Oak Ridge! T.J. Parrish reaches the ball across the goal line, and Oak Ridge leads by a score of 20 to 14. Very important extra point here, David, by the Oak Ridge Wildcats, as Coach Young and his senior quarterback embrace on the sidelines along with Jamie Redman, but more importantly, John Spratlin limps off the field on one leg. He's turned an ankle somehow, uh, maybe a slight sprain. We'll just have to wait and see. A big loss for Oak Ridge. He is the starting fullback replacing Stan Cooper, and he also plays defensive back for the Wildcats on defense. Bad Ulrich in to attempt his third point after Clifford Guthrie to hold. The ball is down. The kick is up. The kick is no good. It's off to the right side, and with 52 seconds to go, Oak Ridge once again a problem in the kicking game, and Oak Ridge leads by a score of 20 to 14. And it'll be Oak Ridge kicking off once again to the Gallatin Green Wave. 52 seconds to go in the first half of play. And really, you can't tell by the crowd down below us, they really not too knowledgeable on the halls in Central game. At halftime, Central leads by a score of six to nothing. Well, and a big missed extra point in this ball game, David, and a big missed extra point in the Central ball game as the extra point after Helton's 80 yard touchdown run was blocked as we are monitoring that game as well. Very important for the Oak Ridge uh, contingent as far as going to the playoffs. However, more importantly, Ulrich misses an extra point. David, I believe he was just over pumped. The soccer style kicker, he kicked it. He almost hooked it to his strong side. So I think he was just a little over pumped on that one and maybe pulled the head up a little bit. But at any rate, Oak Ridge only ahead by six. Very important to stop, excuse me, to stop Gallatin from any kind of a run back here on this kickoff. And Sam Sampson will be kicking off from the 40 yard line, 52 seconds to go, first half 20 to 14. Here's the kick by Sampson, line drive squibber. He's gonna be fielded at the 15, up to the 20, straight up the middle of the 25, to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. Still on his feet to the 45, and pushed out of bounds at about the 46 yard line. And that's where Gallatin will take over great field position, 45 seconds to go in the first half. Well, David, the very thing that you did not want to have happen, it looked like that Samson line drive the kick, which enables the running back, or the receiver in this case, the deep man, to get about 10 yards upfield because the ball got down there so quickly to him. Gallatin has used one timeout. They have two remaining. And I trying to find John Spratlin. I don't think he's out there on defense for Oak Ridge. First and 10, Gallatin, Lewis will throw. Looks down the right side, screen pass, complete. At the 45, to the 50, to the 45, breaks open down the sideline, pushed out of bounds at the Oak Ridge 40-yard line. The clock continues to tick, 30 seconds to go. The Gallatin fans still screaming. Now they do indeed stop the clock. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go, Gallatin at the 40. Well, David, uh, that time it looked like, again, Oak Ridge had the play uh, hemmed in, but McCaskill kind of took a tough angle there, and, and he's, they're finally starting to respect the speed of tallies. He just went right around him. First and 10, Gallatin, Lewis will drop back to the left side, looks down the field, decides to take the ball field. Now we'll throw the ball in the end zone. Incomplete. The man was open. Why you, Graham, on the defense for Oak Ridge? It was incomplete. Second down, 10. Caldwell also back there for the Wildcats, and it looked like that Caldwell misjudged the ball a little bit as he's hitting himself in the helmet. He, I think Caldwell thought that he could drift over and intercept that ball as him and Kwai Yu are talking things over about the deep coverage. And so it'll be second down, 10 yards to go, 24 seconds to go in the first half of play, 20 to 14, Oak Ridge on top of Gallatin here from Blankenship Field. Up to the line of scrimmage, once again will come the green wave. First down, excuse me, second down, 10 from the 40, I formation. Once again, a passing situation. The man is in trouble. He gets away, though. He gets the ball to the 35. Still on his feet to the 35. 30-yard line, that is. He's going to be pushed down at the 25-yard line by 
Jamie Redmond. 14 seconds to go in the first half. Flags are down on the play. Well, more importantly, David, it, it does give Gallatin a first down, so they definitely have four more plays. But let's hold everything to wait on the penalty, and I believe they're going to call holding against the green wave a humongous penalty because you know that the holding call did not affect the run of Corey at all as he was way down the field of course Corey Lewis we're calling him by his first name most of the night but it is Corey Lewis the senior quarterback regarded by many as the best in the state maybe one of the best in the southeast as he's a six foot two senior 190 pounds excellent poise that time David he shows real good judgment he has not thrown the ball tonight into bad coverage except the one interception by Chris Graw. And so it'll be second down for the Green Wave. They're going to back the ball back to, let's see, the 38-yard line after the run. Second down, eight yards to go, 14 seconds to go, 20 to 14 our score, and Oak Ridge will call timeouts. Well, time on the field, our score, 14 seconds to go first half. Oak Ridge 20, Gallatin 14. And we'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Here at Blankenship Field, the fourth and final home game of the 1987 football season. It's been a pretty exciting ball game to this point. Oh, David, just like I was saying, it's just can't believe that Oak Ridge missed that extra point. You would have figured if Ulrich would have had a problem, it would have been the first extra point, but no nerves problems on his part, and I really do believe that he was just over pumped on that extra point. After seeing Oak Ridge get down there and get in the end zone, I think he was just so excited to get in there and kick it that he just hooked it a little bit, but Oak Ridge on top by six points. Very good timeout for them to set the defense. Look for Oak Ridge to drop an extra defensive back into coverage as indeed that is the case as I believe Brad Dew 66 is going to take an exceptionally deep drop as Oak Ridge will only rush three men. I don't know if I agree with that, but they're dropping quite a few people back into the secondary. From the 38-yard line, second down, eight yards to go, 14 seconds to go first half. Lewis will pass, looks down the way, here comes the pursuit. The man is not free, he almost got sacked. The ball goes into coverage, but I think the pass is complete at the 15-yard line. We'll just have to see, four seconds to go. An excellent arm on by Corey Lewis, throwing the ball down to the 15-yard line, gets the green wave in the field goal range. Well, David, Gallatin has to call timeout immediately, and again, they're going to do that. Let's go back to the station. Gallatin driving. They've called timeout on the 15, trailing Oak Ridge by 6. 20 to 14. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. We're here on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7. 20 to 14, our score of the line of scrimmage will be the 15-yard line. David, I'm not so sure that I don't go ahead and call a timeout. If I'm Oak Ridge and I have a timeout left to waste, I want to freeze this guy just another 60 seconds and make him think about it just one more minute. And there's four seconds to go in the first half of play. 20 to 14, our score. It'll be a... 32-yard field goal attempt. The ball will be spotted down at the 22-yard line. Oak Ridge on top by a score of 20 to 14. The Wildcats and Gallatin Green Wave, two traditional powerhouses in AAA football in the state of Tennessee. And it, the field goal about to be made, a 22-yard attempt. Four seconds to go. And let's see, a long count, the ball is down, good snap, the kick is on its way, it looks good, it's up, and good. So a time on the field, our score, as the first half has come to a close, Oak Ridge leads by a score of 20 to 17, a very exciting first half of play. And Jim, joining us here at halftime here in a few minutes, will be the basketball coaches for Oak Ridge High School. There, and uh, by virtue of Peter Simon's statistics, Oak Ridge thrown the ball less during this ball game in the first half than at any time during the year. They've only thrown the ball three or four times, once on a halfback pass by Jamie Redmond, once on the end of round by Stanton McCaskill. TJ's only thrown the ball one time, that for a completion. But the running game has been there, of course. Jamie Redmond, they've been getting the ball to him a lot more than we've seen in a long time. And one thing, I, one thing that you pointed out in the first half of play, when the quarterback for Gallatin throws the ball, he's usually on the money, but his first three or four passes were not on the money, and of course the interception, I think that's the big key, is that interception, and of course the long run by uh, Kwayu Graham, Oak Ridge might not have been this close. Oh, well, I think that uh, Corey Lewis definitely has established that he has a little bit of confidence going into this second half. He looks just very poised back there, David, and those big offensive linemen for the Green Wave, they average 220 pounds. They have two guys well into the 240s, what is interesting about them 
is that they protect very well, and usually Corey Lewis rolls out to the weak side of the field to throw, and he has all day to throw. Each time he's made a big completion, it has been to a secondary or a third receiver on his list of who would like to get the ball to first. Oak Ridge will be receiving as Gallant will be kicking off. Oak Ridge on top in the first half, 2017. David, we're set to kick off. It's going to be a great second half. Why you Graham, back to receive the kick. High kick once again, I believe. It's going to go to about the one-yard line, so it'll be a 99er if he goes all the way this time. Why you to the 15. He's his feet to the 20. He'll not go all the way this time. Gets to about the 23-yard line. That's where Oak Ridge will take over. First down, 10 yards to go. Dunbar coming up limping a little bit that time. He looks to be just slightly shaken up. It looks like an ankle problem of some sort, but he's walking it off. As the Wildcats will take over, David, decent field position. The same backfield we've seen throughout this part of the season. TJ, the quarterback, Jamie Redman, the tailback, Elam and Spratlin will be in the backfield for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. 20 to 17, our score, Oak Ridge by three. Quayu Graham wide to the left side, Oak Ridge wishbone. TJ brings him up from the 23-yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Handoff goes up the middle, Reverend to the 30, breaks it down the right side, 35 to the 40, to the 45 to the 50, to the 45 to the 40, to the 45 to the 40, to the 50 to the 10. Five, touchdown, Oak Ridge. Jamie Redmond all the way down the field for the Oak Ridge score, and Oak Ridge leads by a score of 26 to 17. Well, David, they caught Gallatin in a stunt and Redman showed some speed, but I tell you what, these Gallatin guys were hot on his heels. He needed every bit of that speed to get to the end zone. Oak Ridge lining up immediately for the extra point, not opting to go for two as they could take a 10-point lead on the extra point conversion by Thad Ulrich. Excellent run by Jamie Redman. They caught Gallatin in a stunt, went to the weak side, and they made them pay, David. What Coach Young said in the pregame could happen if they caught them in a stunt. 26-17, Clifford Guthrie will hold, Thad Ulrich will attempt the point after. The ball is down, the kick is up, the kick is good. So it's time on the field, our score, 11:22 to go in the third quarter of play. Oak Ridge 27, Gallatin 17. We'll be back in 30 27 to 17. I bet you it's been a long time that 27 points have been scored on the Gallatin Green Wave. Gallatin has lo lost three consecutive ball games since 1977, I believe the last time and they've lost two consecutive, and they're in trouble right now, trailing by 10. David, Samson's due to get one in the end zone. Let's see how it happens here. High driving, long kick. It's gonna go to the one yard line, and he's got to the five, to the 10, to the 15, on his feet to the 20, still on his feet at the 18 yard line, blasted by one of the Oak Ridge teams, and Gallatin will take over. First down, 10 yards to go at the 19-yard line. Boy, David, if he didn't kick it in the end zone, he got it awfully close as if, if the receiver had not gotten it, it would have touched down the end zone. Everybody pumped up for Oak Ridge. But again, David, Joe Talley, the tailback for Gallatin, can get him six points just as fast as Jamie Redmond. Oak Ridge must contain him and tackle him on the first initial hit. 11 minutes to go, third quarter, 27-17, Oak Ridge on top. Pitch out, right side, Kelly to the 20, boom! He's blasted at the line of scrimmage by Oak Ridge. Maybe a yard on the play, but what a stick. Michael Warren and his company on the play for Oak Ridge. David, Oak Ridge must play containment defense. They're very fired up right now as the Oak Ridge fans finally come to life for about the third time in the ball game, cheering on the defense. Oak Ridge cannot get over aggressive. If the outside men do not contain, Gallatin can make them pay. Second down, nine yards to go from the 20 yard line. Corey Lewis, handoff, goes right side for about four yards, still on his feet carrying the football with Mitchell, but this time they're getting, got him down. Very good defensive stand by Oak Ridge, David, and a very important play here by the Gallatin Green Wave. If Gallatin goes to the air here, it will signal Oak Ridge that they really feel like the momentum is starting to shift and they don't feel like they can run the ball against the Wildcats. Third down, six yards to go for Gallatin from the 23-yard line, 10 minutes to go. Corey Lewis rolls to the right side, looks down the field, nobody oh, comes free, he's in trouble. Looks down the way, pass complete at the 30-yard line. Good play by the quarterback, it's first and 10, Gallatin at the 30. And a very close play again, David, the poise of this quarterback, he stands in there and what is a credit to his team, his receivers know that he is going to buy four and five extra seconds, and they know to break off their patterns, and they move toward the quarterback, as indeed it is a first down for the Green Wave. 
up to the line of scrimmage. Will Lewis will come once again. I formation, 9.41 to go, third quarter, 27-17. On their misdirection, good running room to the 35. Still on his feet to the 40-yard line. I believe that was Tally once again. Maybe Adams carrying the football to the 39-yard line. Gallatin doing what they do best, David. That time, even though it was a misdirection, it was straight up the middle once the guy got the ball from the wing. Very much reminiscent of what Cleveland did to Oak Ridge earlier in the season and what Farragut did in the first ball game of the season. The Gallatin line is definitely the biggest line Oak Ridge has played against so far in 1987. Short of a first down by a yard. Second down one, nine minutes to go, third quarter. Lewis. Wants to pass. Now in trouble. Rolls to the right side. Here comes the Oak Ridge defense. He tries to turn the corner. He'll get down at the 40-yard line. It's a first down. Nice pursuit from the backside by Brad Dew. But it'll be first and 10 for Gallatin. Another good move. I, keep to, I hate to keep going on about this quarterback, David, but he's very smooth. And if you've got a runner like Tally and a quarterback like Lewis, Gallatin is always going to be in this ball game unless Oak Ridge can get up three or four scores. Big play here for the Oak Ridge team. They must stop Gallatin on this drive. 8.45 to go third quarter, first and 10 from the 42-yard line. Lewis hands off right side. Mitchell breaks it to the 50-yard line. Inside Oak Ridge territory at the 47, close to another Gallatin first down. What you get into, David, is we try to re remind the folks at home listening on WATO and on Cablevision Channel 7, Gallatin starts two completely different units, offensively and defensively. So in the fourth quarter, fatigue will not be a factor as far as Gallatin is concerned. Although I do see the big fullback for Gallatin kind of bending over a little bit that time. Uh, as we're going to have a measurement, David, you have an update on the Central Hall score. C.J. LeGreer, the quarterback for Central, takes the ball three yards for a touchdown run. The point after, I guess, was no good, and Central leads Halls by a score of 12 to nothing. And let's see, it was a first down for the Gallatin Green Wave at the 47-yard line. And up to the line of scrimmage will come the Green Wave. 27-17, two big plays for Oak Ridge, a 97-yard kickoff return by Kwayu Grimm, and a 77-yard touchdown run by Jamie Redmond. Gallatin, first and 10. Lewis hands it off on the right side to Tally to the 45, inside to the 43-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about seven yards on the play, second down facing Gallatin. David, right now, Oak Ridge doing a good job just trying to slow Gallatin down as their offensive line is literally exploding off the ball. They run a little bit of misdirection. They give you a false move to one side, and it's almost a, almost a full count to a count and a half delay before Tally again coming back to the weak side of the field for big yardage. Second down, we'll call it five yards to go. Gallatin's Lewis will pass, cranks it up. The ball is complete at the 35-yard line, pushed out of bounds there. First and 10, Gallatin. Well, David, such a strong arm by this quarterback and an excellent pattern by the receiver that time, Bubba Dunn. What that sets up, David, when they can complete that quick out, much like Oak Ridge has done with T.J. Parrish and, and McCaskill and Kwayu, is the pump and go. If, if Dunn can uh, make a pump, if Corey Lewis can pump fake and Dunn can turn and go long, they could break something long against the Wildcats. First and 10 from the 35. Handoff goes to Mitchell, battles his way for four or five yards, maybe even farther than that. Gets the ball to the 30-yard line, where it'll be for Gallatin, second down, and about four yards to go. Well, David, he should have only gained about two yards, and that time he picked up about five on his own individual effort, as Oak Ridge physically just is not able to bring that guy down. He weighs 230 pounds, and if he gets about five steps forward, he's just tough to tackle. 7-10 to go, second down five from the 31-yard line. Lewis brings him up from the eye. Will pass once again, looks down the field in trouble. Now we'll go across the middle. The pass is incomplete, nearly intercepted by Oak Ridge. And Jamie Redmond was the man defending for the Wildcats. It's the third down five for Gallatin. Well, Bubba Dunn was the one playing defensive back on that play, David, as Redmond had a beat on the ball. The very same play that Lewis overthrown earlier or overthrew earlier in the first half of play that time, Redmond was the one to come over. Dunn turned defensive back and jarred the ball loose, so Redmond had an interception. He's by far one of the best quarterbacks I've seen a blanket ship in a long time. Third down, five yards to go from the 31. Handoff goes up the middle. Grudge running room to the 25 to the 20. First down yardage inside to the 17-yard line where Jamie Redmond finally brings the ball carrier down. First and 10, Gallatin. Gallatin continues to move the ball. David again, an inside handoff. From the outside, it's just the isolation blocking up front, using that fullback to isolate on either a linebacker or a tackle, kick them out, and then it's just straight ahead blocking by the interior line of the Gallatin Green Wave. Up they come from the I formation, 6.42 to go. Handoff goes Mitchell. He'll go maybe two 
yards on the play, if, if that much. It'll be second down, about eight yards to go for Gallatin. Right now, Gallatin definitely in field goal position as they, as they have hit from this exact spot before as the first half ran out. So Oak Ridge right now concerned with trying to keep Gallatin as far back as possible away from the field goal opportunity. Right now, Gallatin moving the ball well. Let's see what they do. Second down eight, 6-10 to go, third quarter. I formation once again. Corey Lewis hands it off to Tally. Breaks down the right side. Good tackle by Oak Ridge. He had looked like he was going to get a lot more yardage as he came down the right side. It's a pickup of about three. Third down, five. Line of scrimmage right at the 15-yard line. Looked like Dunbar that time the one to come in and make the stick for the Wildcats. He locked the arms a little bit. And now Oak Ridge has to make a defensive stand. Right now, David, if they stop him for no gain, it's a almost a 32-yard field goal, maybe a little bit out of that guy's range, but he gets it up so high. Very big play for both teams. Third down, call it seven yards to go. Lewis will pass, looks down the way, has some time, throws the ball, incomplete. It was intended at the three-yard line to Bubba Dunn. The ball was underthrown, but nobody could interception as the clock continues to tick on the incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down and seven yards to go. The electric clock operator is yet to stop the clock. 27 to 17, our score. The line of scrimmage is the 15-yard line, and Gallatin, let's see what they elect to do. Gallatin will be going for it here on fourth down. Fourth down, seven, as the Oak Ridge fans come to their feet. Oak Ridge by 10, 27 to 17. Gallatin, Lewis will drop back now, goes off on the draw. He'll get close to first down yardage, and let's see, let's see where they're gonna spot the ball down. Fumble and Oak Ridge has it. It was not a first down. The Wildcats take over on a fine run by Lewis. And Oak Ridge has the football, I believe. One man signaled as such. And it'll be Gallatin first down. As now they change sides, I don't know what the problem was. The Oak Ridge fans were elated. And then one referee signaled that it was indeed first down, goal to go for Gallatin at the seven. Four minutes, 40 seconds to go in the third quarter of play, 27-17 our score, and problems are ensuing, Oak Ridge will call a timeout, and that time the referee signaled that Oak Ridge had indeed held and took over on downs, but then they turned right around and said it was Gallatin first down, and Oak Ridge is charged with a timeout. I think they should have taken an official timeout since they did cause the problem in the first place, the referees, that is. One of the Oak Ridge coaches out there getting an explanation in detail uh, from the officials, and I don't know if he's satisfied or not, but at any rate, what's done is done, and Oak Ridge is going to try to keep Gallatin out of the end zone. They have about seven and a half yards to go, and David, they have really moved the ball extremely well against Oak Ridge. They piled up 222 yards in total offense in the first half, and they come right out immediately and move the ball right down the field on Oak Ridge. And now Coach Bill Young wants an explanation from the referees. Coach Bruce Lucher went out there first. He's now talking to his defensive unit. Now Coach Young is talking to the head referee down on the field. Some explanation on the play. Dale Condra is the head referee tonight. 4.42 to go third quarter. 27-17 Oak Ridge on top. Big series here for the Oak Ridge Wildcats, David. If I was Gallatin, you've got to go with, the, with the, what's done it for him right up the gut. Oak Ridge has really not adjusted. They're still keeping some people on the outside, which has given Gallatin advantage with that big offensive line. First down, goal to go from the seven-yard line. Gallatin, long count. Lewis, pitch, count, gets the ball, five, four, touchdown, Gallatin. Nice run by Joe Talley, and once again, Gallatin on the scoreboard, 27-23 our score. We've got a ball game, David. And with 4.30 to go into the game, once again, will come the place kicker for the Gallatin Green Wave, and really his name is extremely hard to pronounce. I apologize for that. Harley Herjerpe or something like that. It's spelled H-J-E-R-P-E, -E, and he'll be attempting the point after. And with 4.30 to go, long count, and the ball is down. The kick is up. The kick is good. So time will fit our score, 4.30 to go. Oak Ridge 27, Gallatin 24, and we'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Square, the original. For our score, 4.30 to go third quarter. Gallatin to kick off once again. High, long kick. 
fly you Graham fields it at the three comes to the five right up the middle of the 10 left side he goes to the 15 breaks it down the right side to the 20 to the 25 is going to be pushed down at the 25 six yard line and that's where Oak Ridge will take over first down 10 yards to go David Oak Ridge will have the wide side of the field to the home side as Kwayu Graham returns it to the visitor side of the field this sets up the quick pitch to either Elam or Jamie Redman. Also, David, once Redman or Elam have been able to get outside, look for the quick handoff to go up to the fullback, and he could break something here. Let's see what Oak Ridge comes out and does, that, or comes out and tries to accomplish here. First series after the Gallatin score. Two men wide to the right. TJ will pass. The man is there. Complete and fumbled, but it will not be a fumble. It's an incomplete pass at the 35-yard line. Quayu Graham, the intended receiver, Covering for Gallatin was Vince Oldham, a nice stick by him. Oh, definitely a nice stick. That play, David, took a little bit longer to develop than normal uh, for TJ and Quayu as Quayu got about three or four more steps down the field before the pass hit him in the numbers. This puts Oak Ridge in a little bit of a hole here, backed up on their own 25 now, second down, 10 yards to go. Quayu Graham, David, single coverage. From the wishbone, Oak Ridge comes up. T.J. hands it off up the middle to the running back. He gets maybe a yard, maybe two on the play. Third down long for Oak Ridge. Really not what you wanted to have happen here for the Oak Ridge offense to sputter. Down and long, third down and eight. And David, the clock continues to tick. Oak Ridge only on top by three points. It would have been four, but a missed extra point has the Oak Ridge Wildcats leading the Gallatin Green Wave by four. Forty to go, third quarter, Kwayu Graham and John Elam. Wide to the left side, Oak Ridge comes up this time from the I formation. T.J. Parrish, hitch out right side, will go to Revan. He wants to pass, looks down the field. The man is there, complete, and pushed out of bounds at the 50-yard line. The pass is indeed complete. What a catch, David, what a catch. Actually, the films will show that he was not in bounds when he came down, but he was hit as he was in bounds, and of course that is a completion if the hit takes him out of bounds. A beautiful throw and a beautiful execution. Kwayu Graham staying with the pass pattern. Beautiful play by Oak Ridge. If the college scouts were not looking at Kwayu Graham before the last three weeks, they've got to be looking at him now. Well, David, he's just coming to play. He's really He really went up in the air after that ball, and I believe that Kwayu may be the player down on the sidelines as he's got the wind knocked out of him just a little bit and he's so close to the sidelines they can't move him so they're going to take an official timeout. Let's keep it right here, David. This has got to be one of the most exciting football games I can remember at Blankenship Field in the past six or seven years. We expected that. These two teams have been trying to get together for the last ten years. Two very powerhouse football teams, traditional powers in Tennessee and triple-a ball and this is exactly what we expected well David I was talking to some of the Gallatin people before the game their district is such that this ball game is a very important game for them because they feel like that their district is very very tough and they know they need an excellent overall record like Oak Ridge having lost two ball games non-district it could come back to haunt them if they were to drop a district ball game they want this game just as bad as Oak Ridge First down, 10 yards to go for Oak Ridge at the Gallatin 49-yard line, 3.20 to go. Handoff right side goes for about three, four yards, carrying the ball for Oak Ridge. Jamie Redmond to the 44-yard line of Gallatin. The clock continues to tick, 3.13 to go third quarter. This particular style of ball game, David, it doesn't appear that the Oak Ridge team is tiring. I believe they tired a little bit on the final drive in the first half, but because the way the drives have been constructed with big plays on both teams, I think Oak Ridge should be very well rested as we're now inside three minutes in the third quarter. Oak Ridge on top, 27-24. Bernard Douglas wide to the left side, wishbone for Oak Ridge, second down five. TJ, long count from the 45, hands it off once again to Redmond across the 40. Still on his feet to the 37-yard line, first and 10, Oak Ridge. Redmond's running, David, like he weighs about 190, not like he weighs about 165. As I believe when he's seen a running back, like he did down in Cleveland, uh, the Goldston boy and the Parks boy, I think it fires Redmond and the rest of these running backs up a little bit that they feel like they have to show they can do it too. 27-24, Oak Ridge by three here from Blankenship Field. Fourth and final game of the 1987 home season here at Blankenship. First and 10, Oak Ridge from the 36-yard line of Gallatin from the wishbone. TJ rolls, will pass across the way, incomplete. It was intended for Mike Caldwell at the 25-yard line to pass a little bit high. Second down, 10, facing Oak Ridge. Tough play that time for Oak Ridge, David. Had 
T.J. Parrish held the ball and let Caldwell split the halfback. I think he could have lofted him the ball in the end zone that time. Two minutes, ten seconds to go in the third quarter of play. This is David Cleary, Jim Vines, our statisticians tonight. Brian Story and Peter Simons. Our cameraman on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7 is John Hope. You can watch the replay of this very exciting ball game on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7 at 12 o'clock on Saturday. Second and 10 for Oak Ridge. TJ drops straight back to pass. Looks down the play. The pass is there. Here's the man. It's incomplete. Flags are down. And it might be pass interference against either one, actually, as both men were there. It looked like good coverage to me, but we couldn't quite see the hands from this distance. Well, David, what makes that call extremely tough, and I'm not trying to take up from Gallatin, is the fact that the referee who threw the flag really had a very tough angle to make the call, as the officials are going to tell us what's going on, and it is interference, and it is going to go against Gallatin, and it's a very tough call. I, I think if it went the other way, if Oak Ridge had been on defense, you would have to say it was a tough call either way because the official that made the call really didn't have the proper angle. But at any rate, uh, the break for the Oak Ridge Wildcats, and they hope to take advantage of it as they will have it first and 10 on the Green Wave 21-yard line. Why you Graham back into the lineup for Oak Ridge. The line of scrimmage is the 21-yard line of Gallatin. First down, 10 yards to go, two minutes to go, third quarter, 27 24, a very exciting ball game as now Mike Caldwell comes into the lineup with the play. Oak Ridge has it first and 10 from the 21. We're glad you tuned in on WATO and on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7. Why you Grimm, single coverage to the left side. Oak Ridge from the wishbone, first and 10. TJ hands it off up the middle for maybe two yards on the play. And let's see, it'll be second down, about eight yards to go for Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge mixing up the plays extremely well, David. That time, a little crossbuck handoff as we have a player hurt, and it is uh, John Spratlin as he's going to be able to try to get off the field. Looks like either the wind got knocked out of him or his hand is hurt a little bit. It, it's hard to guess from, a, from this vantage point, but Spratlin is not a happy person, as I believe. He's got some kind of a, well, I just can't tell, David, but he's probably the least happy person on the field. Oak Ridge very short in fullbacks. Of course, Stan Cooper has not played for the third consecutive week, and now John Spretland comes out. It'll be second down, seven yards to go from the 18-yard line. Joe White, the sophomore, will be in its fullback for Oak Ridge. 1.30 to go, third quarter. TJ hands it off on the reverse, and they're going to go to Quayu. He's in trouble, hit behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of about five on the play. That time, the play just was very slow at developing. Well, it certainly was, David. It would have been nice to see Redmond fake that handoff because it looked like he had all day to run once the, they saw Kwayu coming in motion there. At any rate, uh, Gallatin gives Oak Ridge a bad play and puts them in a difficult situation as far as the field goal is concerned as they are backed up outside the 20 at about the 23 and a half yard line. And Oak Ridge, David, taking way too long to get a play in here to the quarterback, T.J. Parrish. Mike Caldwell brings it in. T.J. has it. 50 seconds to go. Third quarter of play. Third down. 12 yards to go. The line of scrimmage is the 24-yard line. Oak Ridge from the wishbone. Douglas wide to the right side. Handoff goes Redman up the middle. He'll go to about the 20-yard line and push back where it'll be fourth down and about 10 yards to go. Well, David, it would make it a very, very long field goal for Oak Ridge as they're going to have to go ahead and go for the first down. Edward Dunbar into the ball game. Quayu Graham into the ball game for Oak Ridge. Spratlin back in there after being injured. And Stanton McCaskill brings the play into the quarterback. T.J. Paris as John Elam will go out for Oak Ridge. 17 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. Quayu right to the left. Wishbone for Oak Ridge. Fourth down, 10 yards to go. T.J. rolls to the right and will turn the ball upfield and get blasted and lose four, and Gallatin will take over. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball at their own 25-yard line as the third quarter has come to a close. So our score going into the fourth and final quarter from Blankenship, Oak Ridge 27, Gallatin 24, and we'll be back after this. Here we go as we start the fourth and final quarter, 27-24 our score. David, it's an exciting ball game. I think on that last play, the momentum has definitely shifted to Gallatin. Oak Ridge, except for the first series, has not really stopped Gallatin, and Gallatin has been, been putting touchdowns on the, on the scoreboard Whereas, uh, except for the one time when they got the field goal late in the first half, a touchdown here puts Oak Ridge four points down by Gallatin. Gallatin takes over in their own territory. Big test for the Oak Ridge defense. From the 24, Corey Lewis brings him up. Handoff goes up the middle. Mitchell once again rambling up to the 28-yard line. Substantial gain on the play. Pickup of about five. Second down five 
to the Gallatin Green Wave. David, they just don't go down on the first hit. They've got excellent body lean. They're low to the ground. They try to get lower than the defensive man, enabling them to bounce off, and they really spin away from the pressure anytime they're hit. Very well coached Gallatin team. 11.35 to go in the ball game. Third, second down for Gallatin. Pitch out right side. Tally, some pursuit by the Oak Ridge defense, and he's going to get maybe a couple of yards on the play. Third down. We'll call it two and a half yards to go for Gallatin. David, in the situation the last time, uh, Gallatin had more to pick up and they decided to go through the air. Third down and let's call it a short two as we're into the fourth quarter of play. Oak Ridge on top by a score of 27 to 24. Gallatin probably gonna try to run here. Uh, they are definitely in two play territory. I think they feel confident about running the ball here. High formation, third down, two yards to go. Handoff goes for first down yardage and more. to the 40 yard line up to about the 45. Carrying the football once again for Gallatin was number 28, of course, that's Tally, and it's first and 10 Gallatin. Well, David, they're just running right up the middle on Oak Ridge. There's Randy Sexton hobbling back to the defensive huddle as he's hampered a little bit, of course, earlier in the week. Uh, Coach Young told us that he was hampered, Golden was hampered, both of them playing in the ball game, and Oak Ridge has got their hands full trying to slow down Gallatin. First and 10 from the 45, Gallatin, pitch out right side, Tally's got good running around, now he's going to go down at the 45, still leans forward for about three extra yards. Nice initial hit by Dunbar and Spratlin, but still a big game for the Gallatin Green Wave. Well, David, he just refuses to go down. Uh, for those of you that will be watching the replay on cable te te television channel 7, it's just amazing to see that time John Spratlin hit him head up, and Tally just bounced off of him and picked up about four yards after the hit. Ten minutes to go in the ball game. Second down, six for Gallatin right at the 47-yard line of the Green Wave. Misdirection play goes across the 50-yard line up to the 49. Carrying the football that time for Gallatin was Greg Knees and Stack on the play for Oak Ridge. Let's see, it was Dew along with number 72, Randy Sexton. It'll be third down, about three yards to go for Gallatin. David, big play here for the Green Wave. They're in Oak Ridge territory. They need about three and a half yards to pick up a first down. And up to the line of scrimmage will come Lewis from the 49. Third down, three. Gallatin. Handoff goes up the middle for first down yardage across the 45-yard line up to the 44. Once again, Tally carries for first down yardage. The clock continues to tick. 9.20 to go in the ball game. You hit the nail right on the head, David. The clock continues to tick. They're running very much a ball control offense, taking a lot of time off the clock. Both teams have showed they can score in a hurry. If Gallatin can make a sustained drive here, Oak Ridge won't have a lot of time left to come back. 27-24, Lewis handoff to number 26, carrying the football for good running room. He breaks it free. The quarterback actually has the ball. Now breaks it to 10, five, touchdown, Gallatin. I didn't see it at all, and I don't believe anybody else did. As the quarterback, Corey Lewis, scampers down the field. A man is injured on the play for Oak Ridge, and with 9.05 to go, Gallatin takes the lead. Well, David, they did a beautiful job. That time they brought a man from the short side of the field. He wasn't lined up at the tailback position, but he came in motion all the way to the strong side of the field, and Corey Lewis had the option of pitching. He decided to keep, and he showed some speed, David. He got down that field in quite a bit of a hurry. As we see the shaking up Oak Ridger was Chris Groff, and he comes off under his own power. A massive extra point here. They need to get this extra point to give them a four-point lead. Their kicker's been extremely consistent and very good all night long. Big extra point for Gallatin. The one thing in Oak Ridge's favor, David, Gallatin did score early. Nine minutes to go in the ball game. 30 to 27, our score, 9.05 to go. The point after about to be made by the Gallatin Greenway. The snap is high, the kick is up, the kick is good. So down the field, our score, 9.05 to go in the ball game. Gallatin 31, Oak Ridge 27. And we'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Martin Oak Ridge Funeral Home. In the ball game, 9.05 to go. And Jim, an exciting ball game from the very start. Well, David, we expected it, but I can be honest, I never expected this much excitement in a high school football game. Very reminiscent of the Maplewood Oak Ridge State Championship game of 75 or the Jackson Central Mary game. Both teams going back and forth up and down the field. One of the defenses is going to have to stop the other one to win this ball game. And let's see, Gallatin the kickoff. Quayu Graham back to receive the kick. High kick. It's going to be fielded at the one yard line, so Quayu has to come to the 10 yard line. Comes off the right, gets the block. Comes around the corner, will not go anywhere. He's going to be pushed out of bounds. At about the 22, Oak Ridge will have it from that point. 
and the Wildcat offensive unit strolls onto the field. The Wildcats moved the ball quite successfully. The last drive were unable to score, and with nine minutes exactly to go in the ball game, they'll have the ball first and 10 from the 22. Well, the missed extra point, David, looms big for the Oak Ridge offense. They should have 28 points and only be down a field goal to send this thing into overtime. As it stands now, Oak Ridge needs six and an extra point to be victorious here in this ball game. Oak Ridge from the wishbone, Spratlin, as TJ rolls the ball upfield, he's gonna go to the 23 yard line, maybe a yard at most on the play. It'll be second down and about eight yards to go. Again, David, Oak Ridge not getting the ball to the outside. That time TJ decided to keep the ball and run up the middle. And it gives Oak Ridge a bad play on the first play from scrimmage. Now Oak Ridge has it second down and eight. The clock continues to move. Less than eight minutes and 30 seconds to go. The green wave on top of the Wildcats, 31-27. Second down, eight, Denard Douglas wide to the right side. Oak Ridge comes up, Spratlin at fullback, Elam and Redmond behind T.J. Parrish. Second down, eight, handoff goes to Redmond, turns, spins, tries to get around the corner. He's going to be blasted back at the 24-yard line. So Oak Ridge might have gained a yard on the play at most. They might have even lost a yard, depending on where they spot it. It'll be third down, long situation for Oak Ridge. David, Oak Ridge runs to the weak side of the field on a straight handoff to Jamie Redmond hoping to catch Gallatin in a stunt. I think what Gallatin's doing now is they're playing a little bit of hit and read. They know they've got Oak Ridge in a little bit of a bind. The defensive linemen are just hitting and holding, and the linebackers are reading and going with the flow. Very much different early in the ball game. Gallatin was guessing a lot more on defense. Bernard Douglas wide to the right side. Oak Ridge sends Redmond in motion off to the right. Third down eight, some problems. It'll be a motion call against Oak Ridge's John Spratlin as Oak Ridge just didn't have anything going right for them on that series. They're going to step the ball off 13 yards. It'll be third down, 13 yards to go as they're going to move the ball five yards back. Well, David, that this is the time of the ball game. You don't need a play like that as Oak Ridge really playing penalty free throughout much of the ball game. And Gallatin again gives Oak Ridge a bad play. Oak Ridge breaking out of their traditional offense we've seen throughout the ball game. They come up in the split formation with two wing backs and one fullback, and they just had a little trouble getting the ball off. Now, Oak Ridge with third down 13. Gallatin will be dropping some extra men back, expecting an end-around pass or some kind of halfback pass. TJ's going to have to come through with one, and I don't see Quayu Graham in the ball game. It's Bernard Douglas and Stanton McCaskill, the wideouts for Oak Ridge. Third down, 13 yards to go. Single man behind T.J. Ferris, 7.52 to go in the ball game. Once again, Redmond comes, or Elam comes in motion now to the left side. Handoff straight up the middle to, to, to Spratlin. He'll go nowhere. And it'll be fourth down as the Oak Ridge fans are booing the play selection that time. And with 7.35 to go, it'll be fourth down and 12 yards to go. Just hard to believe, David. Third down and 13 and they run up the middle, hoping again to catch Gallatin gambling a little bit. But as we said, Gallatin is kind of hitting and reading, and when they've got Oak Ridge backed up this far in their own territory, now with seven minutes to go in the ball game, Oak Ridge cannot allow Gallatin to pick up a first down, something they have not been able to hold Gallatin to since the first series of this ball game. And here's the putt by Sampson, and it's high, not very long. It's going to be a returnable. It's going to be fielded at the 49. It gets away, and it's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Oak Ridge, Great field position for Gallatin. Well, David, even if Gallatin is stopped by Oak Ridge on this defensive series, Oak Ridge will have horrible field position barring a turnover. Oak Ridge right now, 6.57 to go, down 31-27. What an exciting ball game here on WATO. Jim Vines, David Cleary, Peter Simons, and Brian Story here bringing you the action from Blankenship Field. This is the defensive stand of the ball game for Oak Ridge. First down, 10 yards to go from the 45-yard line. Eye formation, Corey Lewis hands it off on the right side to Tally, breaks down the right side, hit it at the 40-yard line, gets inside down to the 37, pick up of seven yards on the play. Well, David, he picked up about eight, almost nine on that carry. As uh, Oak Ridge now, Gallatin doing a good job. They're splitting the man way to the strong side of the field, and Oak Ridge bringing two men on him, double-teaming the man which only gives Oak Ridge nine people to defense 10. Then they line up and isolate block on the outside. It's been very effective for Gallatin. Second down, two yards to go for Gallatin. Handoff goes up the middle for first down yardage. Tally has it across the 35. 
down to the 34, six minutes to go in the ball game. Well, and the clock definitely the ally of Gallatin. As you know, they want to stick another score in right here and put the icing on the cake because I think they can finally sense that they're definitely winning the, the line of scrimmage war here against Oak Ridge. First down, 10 yards to go from the 34-yard line, just inside the 35 at the 34. I formation, 5.50 to go in the ballgame, 31-27 our score. Corey Lewis hands it off up the middle for about two yards, maybe a yard at most as he's pushed back as Tally carried the ball. Nice play that time by Oak Ridge. The bad thing, David, the clock just continues to tick down. We're down to 5.40 to go in the fourth quarter. Oak Ridge trailing by four points. 27-31, Gallatin with the ball in Oak Ridge territory and driving second down nine on the Oak Ridge 33 and a half yard line. 31-27 our score, wide to the right side for Gallatin will go Bubba Dunn, 5.25 to go, second down, nine yards to go. Lewis, pitch out, right side goes to Tally, tries to turn the corner and will not, he'll be pushed down at the 32 yard line, game about three on the play, third down long for Gallatin. Here's the play for Oak Ridge, David. Gallatin really should not try to get too fancy here. They really don't want to drive to try to do too much in case they might turn the ball over. But they realize if they pick up the first down here, they could literally run out the clock with an additional first down on Oak Ridge. No doubt, biggest play of the game for the Oak Ridge defense. Third down, six and a half yards to go for Gallatin. Third down, long situation, 440 to go in the ball game. As the handoff goes, now the quarterback will turn the ball upfield and will not get first down yards, actually fumble the ball. It'll be short of a first down by about two yards. The bad thing is, David, with this long field goal kicker that Gallatin has, they may line up and try a field goal from this distance, as indeed, I think that's what they may try to do at this point. Now they're going to bring in that big running back, it looks like, as they want to go for it, and that's what Gallatin will do. Fourth down, two yards to go, four minutes, 10 seconds to go. From the 27-yard line, very important play for the Oak Ridge defense. Corey Lewis, handoff goes to Tally, first down Gallatin as he brings the ball across the 25-yard line. The clock continues to tick. Four minutes to go in the ball game, 31-27, and first and 10 for the Gallatin as they, their fans across the way have just found out. Well, David, right now, Oak Ridge must stop the clock. They have four minutes to go. Now the clock is under three minutes and 40 seconds to go. If Oak Ridge stops and for hardly any gain on this first play, Oak Ridge must start to use their timeout. A lot of second guessing going on in the stands now, right now by the Oak Ridge fans. It'll be first down 10. Tally with the ball is going to be hit and they dropped. all timeout right here, David. And he gained about a yard, maybe two on the play. Second down, 3.35 to go. Second down, eight for the Gallatin Green Wave. The play got underway, David, with three minutes and 50 seconds to go. We're now down to three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Oak Ridge needs to keep as much time on the clock as possible. With their passing game, they should be able to work the sidelines to stop the clock. However, they're allowing Gallatin to run about 60 seconds on every two plays off the clock. Second down eight, Lewis rolls to the right side, tries to turn the corner, and let's see, he'll get the first down and a touchdown. He'll go into the end zone, Gallatin leads by a score of 37 to 27, 303 to go in the ball game. And just like that, Oak Ridge had had a big lead, a 10 point lead, they lost it to Gallatin and the Oak Ridge defense could not hold. It's a 10 point game, 37 to 27, only three minutes to go in the contest and the Oak Ridge fans begin to file out. And the reaction of the fans earlier, let's see, it's gonna be a point after attempted by the Gallatin Green Wave. And with 3.03 to go, let's see, the ball is down. The kick is up, the kick is good. So with time on the field, our score, three minutes to go in the ball game. Gallatin leads Oak Ridge by a score of 38 to 27. This is David Cleary, Jim Bynes, our statisticians tonight, Peter Simons and Brian Story on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7. We have John Hope doing camera, another fine job. The replay of this ball game will be seen on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7 at 12 o'clock. While I have the chance, the 1988 yearbook will be on sale all next week during the fourth and fifth periods of the Oak Ridge High School. The cost of the book is 13, excuse me, it's $23 with your name printed on the cover or 21 without. This will be your last chance to purchase a copy of the 1988 Oak Log. After next week, they will never be on sale again. It's going to be the largest Oak Log in 10 years, so don't forget to buy yours next week. Galton will be kicking off to Oak Ridge. Three minutes to go in the game, 38-27 our score. 
And let's see. The Wildcats will have Quayu, Graham, Bernard, Douglas, and Edward Dunbar back to receive the kick for Oak Ridge. Three minutes to go, 38-27 our score. Over at Halls right now, Central is still leading by a score of 12 to nothing over the Halls Red Devils. So Oak Ridge, as here's the kick by the Gallatin Green Wave, is going to go out of bounds. So that'll be a five-yard step off against the, the Gallatin team, so there'll be a five-yard step off back to the 35-yard line. That's where they'll be kicking off. And with three minutes to go, Oak Ridge is 11 points down, 38-27 our score. They're going to have to hope to score quickly and then get an onside kick at the ball, score right back again. But it, with three minutes to go in the ball game, the possibilities of that are not too strong. But fortunately, like we said, if Central can hold on over there at Halls High School, that would give the... Paul's Red Devils, two district losses, and Oak Ridge could still make the playoffs by beating Carnes and Anderson County. We're just going to have to see how things happen there. 38-27 our score. Gallatin will be kicking off from the 35-yard line. And like we said, Kwayu back to receive the kick at the five-yard line. Douglas and Dunbar back to receive it with him. Oak Ridge, first down, 10 yards to go when they get the ball. They'll have a long way left to see what Kwayu will do with the ball. 3.03 to go, 38-27 now. Gallatin finally ready, and here's the kick by the Green Wave. High driving kick. Kwayu will field it at the five-yard line. Comes up the middle to the 10. Looks to the left side corner, has some room, gets the ball to the 25-yard line, pushed out of bounds at about the 28, and that's where Oak Ridge will take over. First down, 10 yards to go. Some problems on the sideline, but it'll be Oak Ridge taking over. 2.51 to go, 38-27 our score. And Oak Ridge comes onto the field with Jerry Colquitt at quarterback. And Colquitt, a sophomore sensation, as Oak Ridge will come out with Redmond, Elam, and Sprantland in the backfield. 2.51 to go in the ball game. Oak Ridge with the ball. First and 10, 38 27 our score. Wide to the left side will go Caldwell, Douglas, and Elam wide to the right. Oak Ridge backfield split. Jerry Colquitt at quarterback. The sophomore, first and 10 from the 29 yard line. Long count, Cole with the pass. Down the way, the pass is complete to Douglas. Puts the move on to the right side, tries to get around the corner, goes the ball, and for first down yards, and down the sideline he goes. Now he goes out of bounds, out of bounds the 46-yard line. Bernard Douglas on the reception for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. That'll be enough for an Oak Ridge first down. The clock is stopped. Then look at 10. Three. Soft quarterback as there's some movement across the line of scrimmage. It looks like an offside penalty against the Oak Ridge Wildcats. David Oak Ridge still showing a lot of class trying to stay in this ball game, even though they're down by 11 points, 2.41 to go. They have the ball at their own 42, 42 and a half yard line and a penalty again against Oak Ridge. David, they played almost error free all throughout the ball game. Uh, and now they have some bad plays for them at the end of the ball game. And you have a score, David, the Central Halls ball game. 12-0, Central has defeated Halls. That gives Halls two district losses. Oak Ridge, of course, in a position to go to the playoffs if they can win their last two ball games. First and 15 for Oak Ridge at the 37-yard line. Jerry Colquitt brings him up. Two men wide to the left, one wide to the right. Colquitt the pass. Has some time across the way. The pass is incomplete. The man was open, intended for Jamie Redmond down the middle. That time it looked like as Colquitt released his pass, he was hit, so the ball fell a little bit short. Well, David, I think that Redman was unsure of which way the pass was going to come, which shoulder it was going to go over, and I believe that uh, Colquitt threw it directly over the top of Jamie, so he had no way to get a bead on the ball. However, Oak Ridge, the clock has stopped, two minutes and 30 seconds to go, and now we see Oak Ridge in the offense with Caldwell and Quayu Graham split out wishbone formation for Oak Ridge. Second down, 15. As in motion now, we'll go Colquitt to the right side along with one other wide receiver for the Wildcats. Colquitt with pass, little screen pass complete to Douglas. He goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line, stops the clock with 2.30 to go. It'll be third down, 11 yards to go for Oak Ridge. David, they moved it down close, got inside the 30, but could not score when they had to to put it out of reach for Gallatin. Third down, 12 for Oak Ridge. Sophomore Jerry Colquitt drops straight back to pass, has some time, loads it up down the field. The pass is going to be intercepted by Gallatin at the 30-yard line. 
And let's see, the Green Wave will take over first and 10, 2.20 to go, and all they have to do now is run down the clock. Well, they just forced it a little bit, David. It looked that Quayu Graham had broken completely free on the play, but Jerry, just being a sophomore, really had his eyes on McCaskill only, but Quayu Graham was wide open on the play, but, but it doesn't come off, and Colquitt underthrows it a little bit. He's not played in two or three games, David, so it's understandable that he tried to come in and make a big play at any rate, big play for Gallatin, I think they've got the ball game under control. Tally has the ball across the 40-yard line, and it's going to be Oak Ridge has recovered a fumble from the Gallatin Green Wave team right at the 40 with two minutes to go. And Oak Ridge's offensive unit has a chance once again as they come onto the field. Well, David, they certainly do. Very surprised that Gallatin is still trying to run the ball for second and third effort once they got into the line. You would assume that they would just try to run the clock out. But at any rate, Oak Ridge takes it over with a chance to get a score and a two-point conversion, an onside kick if it were to work would give Oak Ridge a chance for a field goal and a victory. At this point in the ball game, what do you think, why was the reason they brought in Colquitt instead of T.J. Parrish? I think his strong arm and the ability to get him down, to get Oak Ridge down the field in a hurry. Colquitt will pass across the way the pass is complete to Douglas at the 30-yard line. Tries to the front of the corner, does at the 25, pushed out of bounds at about the 24, one minute, 30 seconds to go in the ball game. 38-27 our score. I think win or lose, David, it's very important for Oak Ridge to get on the scoreboard here. I think it would show a lot of class on their part to be able to stick it in the end zone right now against Gallatin, as I believe Gallatin was substituting fairly freely, but now we see the first defensive unit back in the game for Gallatin. And up to the line of scrimmage, first down, 10 yards to go from the 25 will come Oak Ridge. Quayu Graham wide to the right side, John Elam also wide to the right. A single coverage, David, on Redman out of the backfield. Colquitt from the 25, first down 10. He'll drop back to pass, looks down the field. The pass is complete to Quayu at the 10-yard line. On his feet down to the 7, first and goal, Oak Ridge from that point. Oak Ridge should have had some plays called. This time they wasted about 10 or 15 seconds getting the playoff. Up to the line will come Jerry Colquitt from the 7-yard line. First and goal from that point. Colquitt, pitch out, Rose goes to Redman. Spratlin's free in the end zone. Touchdown, Oak Ridge. The Wildcats score with 105 to go in the ball game, but Oak Ridge trails by a score of 38 to 33, one minute to go. Well, David, obviously they have to go for two here. If they get the two-point conversion, they will only trail by three points. An onside kick would give Oak Ridge an opportunity if they recover to kick a field goal and send the ball game into overtime. They 30. shouldn't take a timeout here, David, because they're going to need them if they get the onside kick. 38-33 yard score. What a game it's been here from Blankenship Field. Oak Ridge against the Gallatin Green Wave. Still a lot of fans in attendance here. Some of the Oak Ridge thought about leaving before that fumble, and now a timeout is going to be asked for and made by Oak Ridge. So time to fill our score. 105 to go in the contest. Oak Ridge trails Gallatin 38 to 33. And we'll be back after this 30 second. 38 to 33. David, the big play has to be Gallatin trying to pick up additional yardage on their first play. Why did they just not fall on the ball with two minutes to go? Surprising that they would play such an error-free ball game and then make a mental mistake like they did late in the game that gets Oak Ridge back in this ball game. And Jerry Colquitt has the play to the inside of the huddle and Oak Ridge comes to the line for the two-point conversion. Quayu Graham wide to the right. Mike Caldwell wide to the left side. Jerry Colquitt will drop back to pass, is in trouble, throws a little duck, it's gonna be incomplete. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. Quayu Graham had a chance to catch it, just caught, couldn't quite catch up to it. And with 1.05 to go, Oak Ridge will be going for the onside kick. Well, they will, David, and it will depend on what type of coverage Gallatin shows. If Oak Ridge puts their speedy people, and indeed they are, you see Dunbar in there, you see Bernard Douglas into the ball game now on the kick team for Oak Ridge, the kicker, might be able to kick it over the, the front wall and drop it in about five or six yards behind them and create some problems for Gallatin. If Gallatin has a lot of their big people still on the front line, they would have some trouble getting back to that ball. If there's a soft spot, which now Gallatin, the way they're lining up, there doesn't seem to be a soft spot. But I'm very surprised that Gallatin has their big lineman up instead of taking a timeout and putting wide receiver types or running back types up on that front wall, but they are up fairly uh, close to the first 10 yards. As you know, the ball does have to travel 10 yards. If it's touched by an Oak Ridge player before it travels 10 yards, it will be Gallatin's ball. And so Sam Sampson will be attempting the kick 
At the 40-yard line, 105 to go. Oak Ridge has the good hands and quick people in the lineup. And a very important kick by the senior Sam Sampson. Gallatin awaits the kick. And let's see what Sampson will do. And it's on the tee. Here's the kick. It's the onside kick. It's going to be fielded by Oak Ridge at the 50-yard line. It did go 10. Let's see. It's very, very short. Gallatin, let's see. They're signaling. They have yet to signal. It went, it was fielded at about the nine, after a nine yard kick. And if that is the case, it'll be Gallatin's ball. It looked like David Sampson was just a little eager to get to the ball, and he doesn't even have to uh, catch it. All he had to do was touch it, and he did touch it before it went 10 yards. A good call by the officials. Gallatin simply again, as we said with two minutes to go, has the game in their hands if they can run out the clock. And so they'll just fall on it now. One minute, one second to go. And the clock continues to tick down. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. A very exciting ball game here from Blankenship Field. 38-33 our score, 50 seconds to go. And now Oak Ridge calls a timeout when they actually let about nine seconds kick off the clock. David, I, I don't know. I, I don't get it. They, I thought they were going to let Gallatin get another playoff and then call timeout. They wait seven or eight seconds and then they call timeout. So a little bit of a mix-up as to what the strategy should be. But at any rate, Oak Ridge has used a timeout. 50 seconds to go, second down for Gallatin at midfield. His chances of making the playoffs, but Gallatin is a team that is considered one of the top teams in the state to make the playoffs as well. And Oak Ridge has just had problems when they face some top caliber ball clubs, even though the games have been close, late in the ball game, Oak Ridge has had some trouble with these good ball clubs. Second down, 11 yards to go from the 50 yard line. The quarterback just falls down on it and 45 seconds to go. It'll be third down and about 14 yards to go. And Gallatin can pretty much run the clock down. As it's Dave, if Oak Ridge still has a timeout, Gallatin would be forced to punt here, the way I read it. Does Oak Ridge, does Oak Ridge Peter, do they still have a timeout? I don't believe they do, because they had to call that timeout late. And, On the two-point conversion. Right, and with 19 seconds to go, it'll be third down, 14 yards to go, 15 seconds to go in the ball game. They line it up, third down, 14, 38, 33 our score, delay a game will be called now against Gallatin. 11 seconds to go. The Oak Ridge band playing down at Some of their fans on their feet, giving this team a well-deserved hand as they did play well. 33 points against a team like Gallatin, pretty strong for us, a very young team. But uh, with 11 seconds to go, it'll be third down, 19 yards to go. And Gallatin, all they need to do is fall down on the ball. And the green wave up to line of scrimmage, which is the 40. Corey Lewis will now down it at the 38 as the clock will tick down. Gallatin has defeated Oak Ridge here at Blankenship Field. The final score was Gallatin 38 and the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats 33. And uh, what can you say, Jim Vines? The Wildcats played a tough ball game. They just couldn't last at the very end of the ball game. Well, David, they had it in their possession. They were driving. They got a big call on an interference call. They got down inside the 25, but just could not stick it in the end zone. And that was the difference in the ball game. Basically, David, since the early part of the game, Oak Ridge did not stop. This is David Clary, Jim Vines, Peter Simons, and Brian Story and John Hope on Tennessee Cablevision Channel 7. We're glad you tuned in. What was an exciting ball game from Black and Sheffield? Oak Ridge loses 38-33. Well, the big story, David, Falls loses to Central. Oak Ridge can make the playoffs, but I think everyone will agree that there are some fundamental things still left unsolved by this group. They're getting very, very close. So once again, our final score from Blankenship, the Gallatin Green Wave defeats Oak Ridge by a score of 38 to 33. So long here on Tennessee Cable.